Hi, and welcome pre-AP chemistry students from Allen High School. We're going to continue our discussion of getting to a molecular formula. Now, last time, at the end of the last unit, we had determined an empirical formula of C3H8O2. So that was our empirical formula. Now, there are many molecules that have that empirical formula. If we, maybe we had two of these, or, you know, let me even go backwards. What if that was? What if we did have one of those? It is possible that the empirical formula and molecular formula is the same. Or I could have two of those, in which case I'd have C6, H16, O4. Do you notice I'm multiplying each coefficient by that number. What if I had three of these? I could, I would have C9, H24, O6. So our next goal is to find this number. Now I like to give that number some sort of a name or a symbol. So I call that number my number of empirical formula units. So this is kind of a unit, and I want to find out how many of these fit into here. And once I do, I can take that number and multiply each subscript by that number. So let's figure out how to do that. First off, in order to find my number, that whole number, it is always a whole number. We will never have to multiply till whole. We need two pieces of information. We would need the molar mass of our molecule. For now, this is going to be given. Okay. Then we would need to find the molar mass of our empirical formula. So our empirical formula, the last time was C3H8O2. So the molar mass is, it's calculated the same way. I have three carbons at 12.01. I have eight hydrogens at 1.01. And I have two oxygens at 16. Now, I, I didn't capture that number. I was just using this as an example, but I think you get the idea. So I just want to define these terms. So let's take a look at this one. In our first example, our empirical formula is given. We didn't have to calculate it. it the problem gave us our mo molar mass, sometimes called molecular mass, formula mass. Okay, it's got a bunch of names, but they're all the mass of one mole. And the goal is to find the formula for this carbohydrate. I hope you remember these from biology. Those are your primarily your sugars and your starches. And so the question is, what do I need? I need to find some number to multiply these empirical formulas. I'm going to have some whole number multiple of this. And I'm going to multiply that number by each coefficient. And remember, we've defined x as equal to our number of empirical formula units. So in this case, my number of empirical formula units is the molar mass of my molecule that was given divided by the molar mass of my empirical formula. Well, I have one carbon at 12.01. I have two hydrogens at 1.01. And I have one oxygen at 16. There's no difference in how to determine that. If you do that algebra, you're going to get 30.08, and we get 8. So that's our number of empirical formula units. There's never going to be a multiplying to a whole on this step. This has to be a whole number ratio as is. You may have to round a little bit, if, especially if you're given experimental data. But there's not going to be a multiply to a whole step. So now what we do is take that 8. I'm going to put that 1 in there explicitly just for a minute. So it's 8 times 1. 8 times 2 for the hydrogens and 8 times 1 for the oxygens. So I get C8H16O8 as my molecular formula. Okay. 
Now, let's put these two concepts together. We aren't given the empirical formula. We're given percent. So we're given percent carbon. We're told in the problem it's a hydrocarbon. That's going to be very important in a minute. Now, caution, caution, caution. Don't use this given molar mass until step two. We will be requiring you to find the empirical formula first. Some people take a shortcut that works, but not if you're asked for the empirical formula. All right? So we're, I want you to do it our way for now. Later on, you'll have more flexibility in AP to, to vary the method a little bit. But we're trying to teach you some problem solving. All right, now let's see what we have in our compound. Well, we know we have carbon. So I have some number of carbons. And it said it's a hydrocarbon. That means the only thing else is hydrogen. And I have carbon and hydrogen, percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest, multiply till whole. So percent to mass, assume 100 grams. That means I have 92.3 grams of carbon. Well, we seemingly have a problem here because it didn't tell us hydrogen. But remember, we assumed 100 grams total. So the sum of all of our masses had to be 100. And that's what will allow us to find out that we have 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen. So that would be worth a point. Percent to mass, mass to moles. Let's do mass to moles. Mass to moles, use molar mass of the atom molar mass of the pure element. Do not use the compound molar mass here. Can you tell some students have done that before? Because I'm trying to emphasize that this is grams of carbon. So you have to use the molar mass or atomic mass of carbon, not the molecule. Same with hydrogen. Percent to mass mass to moles. So I have 7.685 moles of carbon, 7.624 moles of hydrogen percent to mass. Now that's moles in 92.3 grams. That's moles of hydrogen in 7.7 .7 grams. I need a mole ratio. Mole ratio divide by the smallest. So I'm going to divide by 7.624 and 7.624. And those are very both very close to 1. So that means that my empirical formula is CH. So that's my empirical formula. Now we have to find the molecular. So step 1 get your empirical formula. Now let's do step two. Get to our molecular formula. So for step two, we're going to find our number of empirical formula units is equal to the molar mass. That's when you use this in step two. Never earlier. 78 divided by the molar mass of my empirical formula, which is 12.01 plus 1.01, .01, so that's 13.02. And our number of empirical formula units is 6. So if that's a 1 and that's a 1, I'm going to multiply them both by 6 to get C6H6. And just FYI, that's a common substance called benzene. And if you remind me, I'll tell you a very lame chemistry joke about benzene when I see you next. So until then, this is signing off.